This video was brought to you by my patrons, thank you so much for your support. If you also like to support the work I do, you can join us at Patreon. The links will be in the description. That said, let's get started. Hello, how are you doing? So in this video, we are going to create a black hole, but we are going to create a stylized black hole. Uh, we are going to use some flat design techniques to achieve something that resembles a black hole. And after we are going to create some code that will pull things towards the center of the black hole. This is the goal of this series of videos because this won't be a single video. There is a lot of stuff to show to you. So I think that this will be a three videos series. But I will try to make this, <laughs> uh, the interval between the videos a lot shorter than the previous series, okay? So without further ado, let's get started. So let's try to understand how we can represent a black hole visually. Uh, it's very hard because this is the most realistic image that we have about a black hole. But this is, I think that this is the best simulation of a black hole. If I'm not wrong, this is uh, the simulation used in the Interstellar movie. But this is way too much for me. <laughs> to be honest, when uh, I think about a black hole, I think more about something like this than about something like this. So for design purpose, and this is something that you have to keep in mind when you are designing. Uh, be realistic is not the goal. When you are designing something, you have to understand how the person will uh, know that this is what you are trying to represent. So I think that most often what people think about a black hole is something like this, where, rather than a, <laughs> a donut or something like this. I think that this is the best uh, representation of a black hole. This can invoke a black hole better in people's um, view. So this is the reference that we are going to use. So let's break this down a bit. Uh, you can see that, of course, there is <laughs> a black hole at the center, but at the edge of the, the black hole, there are this light that is because uh, the black hole gravity uh, pulls even light towards the center, so not even light can escape the, the mass gravity of the, the black hole. So the, the light will be pulled towards the center of the black hole as well. This is the reason why it's black. So uh, this aura, this light aura around the black hole is something that we are trying to emulate. And you can also see this swirling, this trio um, thing here, like the black hole is spinning. I don't know how to explain this physically, but uh, I don't know the reason why things <laughs> spin towards the center uh, instead of just being pulled away. I think that one of the reasons why is because uh, the light is passing like a uh, straight, but it's gathered towards the center, so it starts to centrifuge. Is this how you say that in English? Like spinning, because this is the vector that it is. it was going, now uh, the black hole is pulling it towards, so it kind of spins towards the center. I think that this is the reason, but don't take this as, as true or like a scientific explanation. But this is something that we are trying to emulate as well. And there is also the, um, uh, the stars in the background and the stars are also pulled towards the center. This is what the, the breakdown of this black hole. So let's start by designing uh, the black hole with this light, this aura uh, surrounding its edges and this swimming uh, something that will give the idea of motion, of spinning motion. So uh, I will open Inkscape. So the first thing that I will do here, uh, I don't like this default document that Inkscape provides to us, so I will change the properties of this document. I will press Ctrl Shift D uh, and let me change the, the screen because uh, since we are going to use 
some colors on this palette, I will take rid of my image on the screen. So let's focus on the Inkscape interface here. So we have the documents, the document properties open. I will change the display unities to pixels and also the custom size unities to pixels as well. We are going to make this black hole change. We are going to make this black hole a texture so we can use it in a game. But since we are going to have some parts that will be uh, independent from each other, so for instance, the light I wanted to um, to scale out and in, but I don't want everything to scale together. For instance, I don't want the swimming light to spin together with the aura. So we will have to break down these elements. And for that, we are kind of like disassemble the black hole after we are done with the, um, the composition of the, the object. And then we will reassemble it inside Google after. So we are breaking it down into three textures. We are going to use the same texture, but we are going to break it down into pieces so we can use it in Godot engine, okay? For that, going back to Inkscape, for that I will use a, a small um, square texture and I'm going to change the scale to one pixel per unit and change the background color to a very dark color like this. Now to create this aura that we saw, uh, first I think that I will create the black hole center. I'm using the Create Circles, Ellipses and Arts tool. And to create a perfect uh, proportional circle, I'm holding Control, Shift and left click and dragging. Uh, this will constrain the proportions of the circle so we can make a perfectly round circle. And I'm going to duplicate this uh, object. I just right clicked and duplicate. And I will scale it up. So I'm pressing Control to make cons to constrain the proportions and hold Shift so we can scale it taking the center of the... We can scale it relative to the center of the object. That's what I'm trying to say. So this way. Uh, I can see that it seems like this is opaque. Oh, it seems that this is transparent. So I'm going to fill and stroke. And if this tab is not available at your screen, you can go to Objects, uh, Fill and Stroke, where is it? Uh, right here, Fill and Stroke. So you can see that this is kind of transparent and probably the other one is as well, yeah. And now I think that this is better. I'm going to change this object to a light blue color, just like we had in this thing. Uh, this is kind of purple, but uh, at the edge it is kind of blue. Uh, and this one is kind of blue as well. Blue seems to be a good color to use. Uh, you can see that this is a purplish blue as well. Blue seems to be a good color to use in black holes. So I'm going to use this blue or this one. I think that this one, but I'll make this uh, more transparent. I will decrease the opacity to about uh, 50% like that. I'm also going to duplicate this again and scale down so we can have, um, so we can have like three uh, of these texture, three of these circles stacked on top of each other. And this will create kind of like an aura effect. Uh, let me show you how, uh, what I mean by that. So I would duplicate this control D and scale it down holding control and shift. And you can see that when they stack, where they are overlapping is more opaque than the, the, the borders, right? So I'll duplicate this again and scale it down. And this is the, the aura that we want to get. So I will select by holding uh, the left mouse button and drag. I will select all these objects and I will group them by pressing Control G. So now we have all of them as a single object uh, because they are grouped. I'm going to align this to the center of this object using the align tab here, the align uh, dialog. If this is not open in your interface, you can go to object, align and distribute option. 
So as you can see, this will align relative to the last selected object. So I will select this one and then this one. And we are going to center uh, the, the black hole to the, the, the center of this aura vertically, uh, horizontally and vertically. You can see that we are not seeing anything. Uh, so I'm going to move this object, the aura, all the way down by going into lower selection to bottom. You can also press and this will be the shortcut for that. And I will decrease the size of this black hole here. So now we have the basic, uh, the basis of our black hole, which is the black hole. <laughs> we have the center and we have this light coming out of it. Uh, not coming out, but you got it. So now we want to make this swirling effect like we have here, these um, swimming spiral things here. Uh, so, uh, since this is a spiral, we can use the spiral tool. We have create a spirals tool here. And I'm going to create a spiral, a spiral about this size. And if you want to have a, the same spiral as I do, you can pause the video and copy these properties that are showing on the top left of the screen. Now we are going to make the, the stroke of this spiral thicker uh, because we want to have, we want to make the whole uh, trembling effect that we have here in the, using a single object. We, we won't make a texture and things like this to make this seem um, realistic. I'm just going to make a single stroke that will be at the start. I think that just in, at the middle, because you can see that right here where it would start, it is thinner than at the middle of the stroke, and then it will decrease its width as it goes towards the center. So this is what you are going to, to do. To achieve that, I'm going to convert this spiral, which currently is an object, to a path. So path, object to path. And now we will use a power stroke effect because this will allow us to control the thickness of the, the path. So path, path effect, add a new effect, and let's search for power stroke, power stroke, here it is. The thing with power stroke is that it will allow us to control the thickness using nodes. So in, let me, in vector programming, in vector drawing programs, uh, the way that you control the shape of something is by using nodes with a kind of like vertexes, ver vertices, <laughs> uh, and by controlling them, you can control the shape. So this effect, the power stroke effect, will provide us some, some vertices that we can control, and using these vertices, it will tell what is the stroke that will result from the, the combination of all these nodes together in this path. So back to Inkscape, uh, if we go to um, Edit Paths by Nodes tool, you can see that now we have all of these nodes, and the ones that are more interesting are these pink nodes right here, because they are what control the actual thickness of the, of the shape. And I think that I am happy with this already. Um, actually, I, I'm going to change the start cap and the end cap, instead of using but, I'm going to use zero with it. And you can see that it changed right here. So zero with it at the end cap as well. There we have it. And I think that, oh no, <laughs> this doesn't look good at right here. Uh, why though? Oh, okay, the start cap changed to but again, so zero with it. There we have it. So this is the shape that we want to get. I think that I will change this right about here, just so we get it smoother, smoother. So this is what we want. So let's change this to a more purplish color, just like what we have here, something bluish, purple, pink <laughs> uh, color. So uh, I will change to something like this. Or this yeah I think that this is this is good so we are going to make this spiral um, match 
kind of like uh like it was getting into the the black hole itself and for that i would decrease its size a bit to rotate an object in inkscape you can press a single click you can press once on the object and just wait a little bit because if you press twice it will provide the notes to you but if you press once and just press the, the second click uh, after some time uh, it will provide the rotation handles to you and to snap the rotation to 15 degrees I'm holding control and by using these handles uh, the handles on the corners we can rotate if you use the handles at the middle of the lines it will uh, I don't know what's called but uh, it will do this <laughs> I don't know how I, I think that's rear yeah what we want is this on the corner the handles on the corner because this will allow us to rotate I will decrease the size again I will click once and drag it right about here I think that this is good because what we are going to do is to make the the center of the the black hole at the top of everything so you can see that currently the spiral is on top of the black hole and this seems bad so let's move it on top of everything raise selection to top and looks way better already so i'm i'm going to duplicate this Control d and we are going to flip it both horizontally and i think that we can basically just rotate it so i'll click uh, on it again and rotate it 108 degrees so we can have something like this uh, right here and again i will select the center of the black hole and move it to the top i think that we can make it yeah right here so I I'm going to select both these and this spiral and group them so we can use the center of the group as the reference to align everything to the center of the black hole. So I'll select this, hold shift and select this, control G to group them. And I'm going to select the black hole, uh, align and distribute, center and center. So this is what we want. This is what will be rotating in the in Godot engine. This will perform this animation, rotating and rotating. Uh, and I think that I will change the color of one of them so we can have variation to the to the spinning animation. So I will ungroup them. Control Shift G to ungroup, and I will select this one and make it look bluish. Yeah, this one, perfect. So now it's time to break the black hole into three pieces. I'm going to group the, the spirals again, select this one and this other one and group, control G. Uh, I'm going to move them away from each other so they will be uh, independent objects. The important thing when you are making a pack of textures, a pack of sprites, is to prevent this from happening. The bounty box of one object overlapping with the bounty box of the other object you can see that there is these uh, overlapping because Godot will take the rect of the texture to render it so if we are trying to render only this sprite uh, it will take the the bounty box of it to render it and inside this bounty box we have the spiral as well so what I'm going to do is to decrease the size of this black hole so we have more space to prevent the, this overlapping from happening. Now you can see that we don't have any overlap now. Um, with that, I will save this texture and we are done with the design of the black hole in Inkscape. So Control S to save. So I'm going to create inside my video, <laughs> my video project, project here. So create folder uh, project. And I'm going to save it as black whole texture save it and we are done so in the next video we are going to see how we can take this texture import it in Groot and use sprites to recreate this uh, black hole object in Groot engine and animate it there 
we are also going to have some stars textures so we can make uh, some sprites going towards the center of the black hole as well and this is the goal for the next video for this video that's it we finished designing our black hole so for this video that's it I hope you enjoyed, this was a very fast paced tutorial, I guess. Uh, if you have any doubts about what, uh, about something that I did here, please leave a comment below. And I'm trying to answer everyone. And also, please leave a feedback about this video because it's the first time that I do a drawing tutorial, design tutorial. Okay, so thank you so much for watching, keep developing and we'll see you the next time.